Our ethnic background contributes to a unique hair type. Let's talk about how we can best take care of our hair based on its type. And I will tell you about how I modify my approach to hair transplant surgery based on the type of hair that I'm working with. And I understand that each ethnicity has a spectrum of hair subtypes. And in this video, I'll be highlighting the key characteristics and challenges of each main type that has been described in the literature. Let's start with the number of hairs on our head. Typically, those those with finer or thinner hair will have a higher hair density compared to those with thicker or curlier hair. Caucasians on average have a higher hair density, about 100,000 hairs on the head. Those with Asian descent tend to have a lower hair density, closer to about 90,000 hairs. And people with Afro-Caribbean hair typically have an even lower hair density of about 70,000 hairs. But the number of hairs is not the whole story. There are many other differences that contribute to the look of our natural hair. That includes the caliber or the thickness of the hair, its shape, the curl, the oil composition, skin thickness, and mechanical properties. And it's the hair follicle itself that determines the appearance of our hair. The follicle shape determines the hair texture. So in Asian hair, you typically have a circular type of geometry. In African hair, it tends to be more elliptical in shape. And the Caucasian follicle tends to be of an intermediate type of shape, a little bit more oval shaped. And it's the follicle size that determines the hair thickness or its caliber. And this is the thickness that can be enhanced with medical therapy such as minoxidil. To find out more about minoxidil and other types of medical therapies for your hair, head to feelconfident.com. In this paper, as far as hair thickness goes, Asian hair was reported as the thickest at 80 to 120 micrometers, followed by Latino, then Caucasian, and then Afro hair. But in this other paper, the greatest hair thickness was actually seen in the Arabic population, though it was also the lowest hair density. And often we see this inverse relationship playing out between hair diameter and hair density. The greater the diameter, the lower the density. The lower the diameter, the greater the density. Now let's talk about the curl of one's hair. The difference between the various types of curls is actually the distance from the skin where the curl starts. So you can see in this level five curl, it's actually starting right over the skin surface. And this is seen in very kinky hair. Now let's get into some general hair care advice. For Caucasian hair, if it's naturally straight, make sure to use a volumizing shampoo about two to three times a week. One's natural oils from not over shampooing will add volume and manageability. A volumizing conditioner can also help, especially when applied to the mids to ends of the hair shaft. And add additional volume and moisture to your hair for styling purposes using a volumizing foam or a mousse. And we have all of these available with additional ingredients to help strengthen your hair at feelconfident.com. These products can be used on all hair types. And make sure to avoid excess heat styling. If need be, use lower temperature settings. Now moving on to Asian hair. Because it's less dense, oils and other conditioning agents can actually sit there and weigh down the hair and it can cause product buildup. So avoid products with lots of oils. Heavy moisturizing conditioners can make the hair look flat and greasy. Regular massages and scalp rubs can help manage the natural oils on the scalp. For haircuts, hair that's trimmed too close to the scalp can stick out, creating the unflattering illusion of an oversized head. On the other hand, long hair that isn't cut properly can weigh heavily on your scalp, neck, and shoulders. Now, in terms of Afro hair, with suggestions from the American Academy of Dermatology, it is recommended that you wash your hair once a week or every other week to prevent buildup of hair care products, which can be drying to the hair. Conditioner can be your friend every time you wash your hair, especially on the ends. Hot oil treatment one to two times a month can add moisture and elasticity. Be careful with relaxers. Touch Touch-ups should be done maximum every two to three months and only to the newly grown hair. If you would like to press or thermally straighten your hair, use a ceramic comb or iron and only do so once a week. Make sure the device is not too hot. Avoid traction alopecia by making sure braids, cornrows, or weaves are not too tight. Working in New York City, I have the privilege of operating on patients of all backgrounds, so we have to adjust our techniques depending on the hair type that we're 
dealing with. Now let's tackle a crucial topic in hair transplant surgery. Differences in hair types between Caucasian, Afro, and Asian hair and their impact on the transplant process. Now we've spoken about this briefly before in the video, but now let's get into the nitty gritty about the curl of the hair. The external curls of the hair are extensions of the internal follicle curve. An extreme is the O-shaped curl seen with very curly hair. The more closed the shape of the follicle curve, the more difficult the excision is with FUE harvest technique. Since the punches that we use tend to be straight, an arc hand movement is often added when we're dealing with curly hair. This helps reduce the rate of transection as we're harvesting the grafts. Imagine if you have a curved hair and you're going in with a straight punch, you're probably going to transect and not capture the bulb, which is the very important part of the hair follicle. Instead, when you go in with your instrument, if you gently curve your wrist and follow the natural curve of the follicle, you're much more likely to capture it safely. Remember that Asian hair has the largest cross-sectional diameter or caliber. What this means is that we often need an additional row of single hair grafts to create naturality at the hairline. Asians have a high proportion of single hairs naturally present in their hair, about 25 4 to 30 percent compared with 14 percent found in Caucasians. So what this means is that there's less of a need to create single hair grafts under the microscope. The punch size I use is typically a 0.95 millimeter punch and I use the serrated tornado punch from WA. The recipient sites that are created might be bigger than the typical Caucasian patient, despite the same punch size. And this means that we might have to put fewer grafts into the same region. But because of the greater caliber, the end result can still be very impressive. And also keep in mind that with Asian hair, hair follicles tend to be longer than in Caucasians. The dermal papilla is on average five to six millimeters from the skin surface in Asian compared with four to five millimeters in Caucasians. What this also means is that you need a slightly deeper insertion of the punch when you're working with Asian hair. Also with Asian hair, the angle of the hair tends to be more perpendicular to the scalp surface. So if we're doing a hair transplant involving FUT harvesting or a strip excision, we have to be careful because that linear scar might be more obvious given the natural angulation of the Asian hair. Asian hair also tends to be more metabolically active. What that means is that the grafts can be more vulnerable to dehydration, so they have to be handled with care. Now, when it comes to Afro hair, given the curl of the hair, we have to make adjustments when we're doing surgery. Despite a lower density, you tend to get better coverage per graft, so fewer grafts are often needed. The typical punch size that I use is a 1.0 millimeter punch. I also use a serrated tornado punch from WA for this type of hair. Again, the recipient sites tend to be a bit larger compared to Caucasian hair and sometimes even a bit larger than for Asian hair. Hair follicles may be more shallow under the skin surface, so we don't want to punch too deep or else this will increase graft transection rates. And as I previously stated, we need to adjust our hand motion to go with the curve of the hair every time that we do an FUE punch. And that slows down the process quite a bit if you're trying to do it safely. Also, the implantation of the hair is more challenging because again, you need to follow that curvature so that you don't injure your graft. Afro hair generally has less tensile strength and it breaks more easily than other hair types, so it needs to be handled with care. Many of my male patients with Afro hair prefer a straighter type of hairline. And the good thing is there's already natural irregularity created even if you're going for a straighter hairline because of the curly nature of the graft. And it's important to note that when we're doing FUE surgery or even FUT surgery, poor scarring in the donor area is very rare if it's done properly. And this is even for patients who may have keloid scars on other parts of the body. But if you're worried about how the scarring will look from a larger procedure, you could always do a smaller test procedure to see how the donor area fares after that. But given that there's less contrast typically between the skin and the hair color, that helps create a very natural appearance to the final result. Remember, whether you're choosing a hair transplant surgeon or someone to 
to help you with your routine hair care needs, it's important to find someone who deeply understands the unique subtype of your hair. They need to have learned about it properly, but also have to have enough actual experience working with your hair type to properly take care of you. Your choice can make a significant impact on the outcome and health of your hair. Stay informed, choose wisely, and celebrate the unique beauty of your hair.